If you've been looking for an ultralight, ultra compact, yet still very efficient wood stove, then I may have the answer for you. The Emberlit Titanium Fire Ant. Stick around if you want to learn more about it. Okay, quickly the backstory on how I got to own the Emberlit Fire Ant Titanium version. So a few months ago I did a video comparing the original Emberlit stainless steel version that I've had for a number of years against another stove that had been sent to me for testing which was the Uberlieben Stoker. And they're similar in design but I did say in the video that the Stoker was a copy, not a clone, but at least inspired by the original Emberlit. Well, the owner of Emberlet, McHale, had seen that same video and he commented to me that he was appreciated the fact that I had uh, acknowledged that the Emberlet was the original design. So we got to chat and I said, you know, I've always loved the Emberlet, the one that I own, and that I would love to someday to try the Fire Ant. And so, McHale offered to send it to me, and that's how I got to have the Fire Ant. So let's talk a little bit about specs and I'll set it up and we'll do a, well, we'll cook my lunch on it. Okay, I took the stove apart so that I could put it back together and show you how it goes together. I don't usually do that in most of the videos about Emberlet stoves or any of the ones based on the Emberlet, simply because there are so many videos now that people, most people know how to put them together. But uh, I think it's worthwhile. I have a few of my own little tricks that help it go together more smoothly, a little quick, more quickly, then I might as well share them with you now. So, I put it back in this package now. I sh must tell you right up front, this is not the package that the stove came with. It came in a small vinyl slip cover, open top slip cover, that uh, to be quite honest, I, it didn't inspire me as far as uh, not losing parts from the stove, so I set it aside and I made a small little case for this out of some inexpensive material. It didn't take very long, it's a very simple little case to make, just a little bit of Velcro on top, and now I feel comfortable that I'm not going to lose any of the components of the stove. So what do you get when you get the stove? You get the basic stove, which is five components, and you get one other piece I'll explain in a minute. So you get the four sides of the stove, and of course you get the base plate of the stove. So let's put it together. So, one of the tricks that I have found for, the, for the putting that together is that the, and it's done for structural rigidity, is that the plates, as they're stamped in the machinery, there is an impression laid around the outside. So on one side it's kind of depressed in, if you flip it over it's pressed out. What I do is, just for consistency, is I make sure that all the plates are facing in the same direction. That way they'll go together much more smoothly. So, let's just put the four sides together. They just hook in from the top. Now one thing I'll say as I am doing this is that this is a very thin, very lightweight titanium. And as a result, it's not flimsy by any means. It actually turns out to be a very strong design, but it's very, very flexible as a result of being so thin. So it, sometimes it can be a little tricky to get together. Uh, you may take a little bit of practice. Just uh, stay with it. You'll get the trick. So I have the four sides holding together. There is the front of the stove, and that'll be the last side that, uh, that gets hooked up. And I have the base plate, and the base plate has three uh, projections on it that slide into three slots on the base. So I'll line those up, hoping that you can see this as I'm doing it. And then what you're left with is just one side, and that flexibility is, this is where it's an advantage. You're able to line up the notches, flex the material a little bit, and it's done. So that is the fully assembled stove. So let's talk about weight. So the weight of this stove, now I think online it is listed at three ounces. And uh, when I measured it, I measured it at 3.3 ounces. So I'm not sure if they included this little plate. By the way, this little plate is used for solid fuel, like a Esbit or hexamine tablets. And you can see there are slot on either side. And that way, when you're putting it together, you would put that, that plate inside. And then you can light and burn your, your Esbit tablet on top of that plate. I haven't done that yet. I'm not a big fan of Esbit. I will do that to test this stove out. But uh, that's not what I'm going to do today. Today, of course, we're going to be using wood. So I measured it in at 3.3 ounces or 95 grams. And that is <laughs> unbelievably lightweight. It's hard to describe just how light this stove is when you hold it in your hands. 
But there is a penalty to be paid for having that lightweight a stove, and the penalty comes in cost because titanium, small lightweight titanium stoves of any design and any make are considerably more expensive than any of the stainless steel versions. So what I wanted to do is mention that I am going to put the, the links where you can purchase the Emberlit titanium fire ant in the show notes below, both in Canada and in the United States on Amazon, and I must well put the address in directly for uh, the, fire, or the Emberlit company where you can go and purchase it as well. Uh, it is considerably more expensive in Canada than it is in the United States, but that's not surprising. That's, uh, that's common for a lot of what we have to buy up here. But what I wanted to do was give you a comparison of this stove with something else that I have used and made videos on in the past on my channel, and that is the Luxada folding wood stove. This is the hinged version that goes together with a pin and if you're interested in knowing more about this stove uh, I have quite a few videos on this describing how it functions with different fuels and how to get the most out of it and that's why you see a set of crossbars on top which I'll explain in a second. So the diff main, main difference here is weight. Uh, <laughs> wow let me tell you there is a huge difference in weight. This setup right here with the aluminum cross stand comes in at 251 grams or 8.84 ounces. That's almost three times as heavy as this little titanium stove. Now, you are not going to pay anywhere near the price for this stove as you would for this stove, so that's what the comparison is. How much do you need an ultralight stove? If you're looking for an extremely lightweight, extremely compact stove, then titanium is, of course, the way to go. If the weight isn't an issue to you, but the cost is, then maybe you want to look at something like the Luxata. I should mention that there is also a stainless steel version of the Fire Ant, which is considerably less expensive, heavier than the titanium version. I don't have the weights with me, but I will annotate it on the screen. I believe it's still lighter than the Luxata is by, uh, by a few ounces anyway. So, I show the two of them to you, but I am not going to compare them in terms of building a fire in each. Uh, so, we're just going to set this one aside, and if you're interested, as I said, you can go back and look at some of the videos I have on this one. Let's just talk very quickly about measurements, and I'll show you one other way of using the stove. So, measurement-wise, it is five inches tall, and that's good in comparison with the Luxada. Reason being is that height actually, my experience so far, allows the stove to draft better and perform better, but it also allows for some taller sticks to be put in because I'm going to use it as a top-down burn as you'll see in a few minutes time. And I find that I can get a little bit of longer stick in, at least for that initial burn, until they burn down. And then, of course, I'm going to be putting longer sticks in through the feed port on the side. So five inches tall. At the base, three and a half inches by three and a half inches. It's important to note, of course, that it does taper towards the top. So it is about a three inch by three inch opening at the top. All right, so that's the stats on the stove. The relative comparison, one more thing that I want to show you is about using a Trangia with this stove. So I did mention that you can use Esbit, but you can also use a Trangia. I will tell you, it's not ideal. It's a great alternative to have. And the reason it's not ideal is that it's a bit tricky. It's not a matter of simply dropping it into the top. It won't fit. You kind of have to partially disassemble the stove. I'll do that and I'll show myself doing it. However, don't be surprised if I struggle with it a little bit and you'll see why. What you're going to do is engage this small rim on the Trangia into the four slots made it that it's intended for inside of the top of the stove. So I have done this a few times. Hopefully this is showing up. And once you get the four or the rim sitting in those four slots, uh, now you have to flex the stove to get it back locked in. And this is where the trickiness comes in. So I find it easier if I lay it on the side like I've done here line it up and there we go okay so now it's in so the trangia is now or excuse me the, the emberlet fire end is now set up to work with the trangia and it will work just fine it is set at a nice height above the uh, the ring or the the uh, burner for the uh, for a good efficient burn um you're, you can use your lid for putting it out but this is the trangia knockoff of course but you can reach in with it and snuff it out one of the reasons I like the knockoff is it has that little bit of an extension. It makes it a little easier to reach in without getting your fingers too near the flames. Now, one thing I did notice about this, and I think that other people have mentioned this as well, is using the Trangia in the Fire Ant in simmer mode. So, if I open the ring up, because I want just a small bit of flame showing through, I can get it in there, but 
it's a little bit precarious now not so bad if I wasn't using this one with the has that uh, that extension on it but otherwise you know it does go in but you can't open it up any further than that so you can't use the full ring all the way open you can only use it open a little bit which is fine for a nice low slimmer or simmer excuse me but uh, you know you it's it's not as convenient as it is in some of the other stoves however no problem at all reaching in to snuff it out as it's intended to do all right i'm going to take it apart set it back up for wood uh, burning and uh, we'll get some water on to make myself some lunch Okay, so I have the fire ant set up in an existing fire ring, and I'm doing that because I just want the rocks for a little bit of wind protection. Right at the moment, it's nice and calm, but a few minutes ago, it was really gusty wind, so I do have an aluminum windscreen that I could use for this, but uh, if I don't need to use it, then I won't bother setting it up. So it's sitting here. I have it loaded for a top-down burn with a little bit of birch bark on top. I may have to take some very small twigs and place on top of that as it starts to burn, just to make sure that I get a little bit of a fire and cold dropping down into the vertically placed sticks so you know one of the advantages of a small stick stove like this one is the fact that they can use small sticks you don't have to do a lot of wood processing all the wood here were broken off dead limbs from a, a spruce tree nearby so I didn't have to cut anything down cut, uh, saw it up split it out I just have to collect some dry twigs to make this work one of the disadvantages of a small stick stove like this is that it will burn through its fuel very quickly, much more so than a larger stove will. So, like all stick stoves, but especially important for small ones like this, is that you have a good quantity of fuel nearby. Now, having said that, this vertical lineup, or this top-down burn, where the sticks are placed in vertically like this, gives me the longest burn time before I have to refuel. And then if I need to have it longer than, than what this will provide me, I can start feeding sticks in from the side as it's intended to be used as well. All right, so I have this ready to go. Uh, right next to it, I have my titanium uh, 750 milliliter pot by Tom Shoe. And once the fire gets going and I can make sure it's going to sit on top of this stable, then I'll start the timer. It's not a scientific test, but two cups of water, uh, cold river or lake water here, just to see how long it will take to come to a boil. And we can make a few observations as it goes. So doing the high tech, old school cigarette lighter to get things started. It'll take a second for the wood to catch and what I'll do rather than just uh, let the camera roll is uh, as the vertical burn starts and the top down burn I'll turn the camera back on and we will put the pot on. Okay, a couple minutes later, the fire is burning well. It's sinking into the, ver the sticks vertically. I probably had a little bit too much birch bark in there to start with. It didn't need it, and it tends the ash tends to clog it a little bit until the until it's uh, it's all consumed. So now it's ready to go. Let's put the pot on. You can see it's drafting very well. All right, just yeah, that's centered. So first impression is, and I'm going to give you a, more of a look at it from the side as well in a minute. First impression is, is that the pot is just a good size for this little stove so that there's still room all the way around for the heat to vent in the exhaust and the air to flow through. It did dampen it down a little bit, and that's, that's going to happen. Oh, yeah, hit the start button here. All right, so the phone, using my phone as a timer, it is going. And uh, we're going to see how long it takes to come to a boil, but uh, I'll give you a progress report. It shouldn't take more than five minutes or so, and I'll give you a progress report as we go. Okay, it's been a couple minutes since I put the pot on. The water is getting hot. It's not ready to a boil yet, but I just wanted to give you a different view. You can see the fire burning down into the stove just nicely. And a little bit smoky right at the moment, but that's okay. It's The fire is still burning well. And uh, I take it, don't think it'll take very long before this comes to a boil. Okay, I have to admit, it did catch me off guard. It's still on the initial load of sticks. Ah, there, that's easier. And we got a hard rolling boil. Nine minutes, 22 seconds. Uh, it may have been just a little faster because uh, I wasn't quite prepared for it to come to a boil that quickly, but there it is, nine minutes, 22 seconds. Not bad for a small stove, two cups of cold river or lake water, and uh, there's still heat in it. I can still see quite a bit of heat from the, or, and quite a bit of fuel from that original uh, load that I put in here. It wouldn't last much longer, but it was long enough to bring this to a boil. So, great, okay, I'm going to use this to make some lunch, and then we'll wrap this video up. Okay, so a few closing thoughts on the Emberlet Titanium Fire Rant.
Do you know, this is a small, very small, very lightweight, very compact stove. And of course, all those features come with a cost, and that is a little bit more expensive than a lot of other stoves. But I don't know that you can do better than this in terms of performance and weight and compactness. Uh, if there's something about the design of this stove, it just seems to draft correctly and allows for enough ventilation all around the top. You can see there's all kinds of air holes or ways for the heat and exhaust it to flame to come out through. So it's a great little stove. You know, one of the other advantages of a titanium stove, this small, this thin, this lightweight, is how fast it cools off. It had no sooner gotten down to hot coals than I dumped those over, and within a minute I could pick this up so I could do this closing segment on the video. Nice little stove. It's not for everybody because of the cost, but if you no, don't mind the cost and you're in the market for an ultralight stove, then I don't think you can do any better than this, to be quite honest. All right, as I mentioned, I will leave the information in the show notes below where you can purchase the titanium uh, Emberlit Fire Ant as well as the stainless steel version if you like the size but not necessarily the price. So until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled. It'll make all the difference. Bye for now.